All right, out on the streets again, Cordoba, Cordoba capital. And uh, in our last video, when we went and saw the house of Rafael de Sobramonte, um, I remember <laughs> I was in the museum. And uh, remember, I say, of course, because it's actually been a couple of days. There were a few days in between uh, when we went and saw that uh, and when, we, when we're out today that were like brutally hot and humid. Yesterday, it was like, uh, I think it got, the hottest it got was like 97 degrees Fahrenheit, which is like 37, 38 degrees Celsius. And the humidity was like 90%. It was so humid and hot. Like you come outside and you can look down the street and see the water vapor like in the air. It was disgusting. So I didn't do much. Just stayed in the apartment in the air conditioning and, uh, and did a lot of video editing. But anyway, it's a few days later. And today we are going to go and try and find the uh, the first like uh, location where the first founding of the city of Cordoba unofficially was and uh, the story is when we were in that museum the uh, house of Sobramante we saw you know like the original map of the first uh, layout of the city and you know that that like six by ten uh, block map that they had drawn out and that's not actually the original original place where they founded the settlement the original original settlement was founded by a guy named Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera which uh, we actually saw something in the museum I remember uh, with him and I and I couldn't like remember exactly who he was which is crazy because uh, he's got a pretty crazy story and uh, part of that story is that he founded the first settlement in this area uh, during the Spanish colonial era, era in uh, 19, or 1573 so we're actually gonna walk just down the street which is crazy like about eight or nine blocks and uh, when we get there We'll be able to see where the original settlement was founded because we're actually staying really close really close to where it was so uh we'll check in when we get there the interesting thing is they founded it uh in this location that we're going to go to and then they moved it later so a few years later like four years later they moved to the location where the actual city was really started and uh, we're going to see that location too that one's way easier to find though because it's the dead center of the old district of the city, basically right where we were when we were uh, going to Sobramante's house. So we already basically found it. We want to find this other spot because what happened was 1573, Jeronimo uh, Luis de Cabrera, who was uh, governor of this whole area, uh, he founded a fort down here on the bank of the river the Primero River, or uh, the natives call it the Suquio River, but he founded a fort there, and uh, they realized, I guess, well, after some <laughs> interesting stuff that happened to uh, Cabrera, and we'll talk about that, uh, after a few years living in the fort there, everyone realized, well, this is not a great place to found a settlement. So they moved over to the, uh, the old town part of the city, where we were before, but I think it'd be interesting to see where the original, original fort was. And we might not be able to find the, uh, the actual fort. I don't think there's any ruins of it or anything, but I do think there might be like a little monument over there. All right, so I think we may have found the spot here. If you could see like down that way, there's a hill, sort of a very shallow hill going down. And up here at this intersection, um, when we walked up here, we had to come up a pretty shallow hill also. So it's like a wide, shallow hill in every direction. And this intersection here seems like it's like the top of the hill, basically. And if you imagine 1573, nothing this was here, no streets, no buildings, no nothing, just open land. If they were going to build a fort, and the whole point of the fort was to provide defense for the first settlement against attacks from the indigenous, who of course indigenous people were not happy that the Spaniards were here um, and they would attack 
uh, this would be the spot. You'd build it right here. At the corner of Catamarca and Avenida Patria. This would pretty much be it. And some of the research that I did sort of, um, it, it indicated that this area right here in this neighborhood along Avenida Patria was the spot where, uh, where the, they think that the fort was founded. And like I said, there's no, uh, there's no rec real record of it. There's no like ruins that you can go to and visit. So you just have to kind of like piece together from the different history you know, books and whatnot, where you think it is. But I think that might be it right there. And we'll keep walking here down the hill because I think at the bottom of the hill, about five blocks down here, five, six blocks, right next to the river, there's a, uh, if we head down this way next to the river, I think there's actually the monument right by the river. So we can check that out. But I think we may have just seen it up there. We're going to say that that's where it was. See, you can see as we're coming down this way that it's like a hill, right? We're going down a hill, a very shallow hill. But we're going to say officially that that's where I think the fort would have been. They would have put it up there. And they would have, uh, they would have placed it somewhere at the top of a hill, high up so you could see in every direction in case you were getting attacked. Uh, and you know from there I can tell if there were no buildings here you would be able to see all the way down to the river so it's kind of the perfect spot so let's mark that mission accomplished we found the location at least where we think that the first fort was that they uh, they found it in 1573 and uh, again it was Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera, which is a cool name. And uh, his story is really, really interesting, actually. We can talk about it a little while we walk down towards the, uh, walk down towards the monument here. So that dude, uh, Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera, is governor of Tucumán. Tucumán was like what they called this area of northern part of Argentina. Uh, this is actually before there was even a Rio like a Viceroyalty of Rio de la Plata, which we were talking about in our video about Sobramante. Um, all of this was part of the Viceroyalty of Peru. And this area here was called Tucumán. It's controlled by a governor. The governor was uh, subservient to the Viceroyal, uh, like the uh, Viceroy of Peru. Okay, so the Viceroy of Peru, uh, he ordered uh, Cabrera to found a settlement and he wanted the settlement in Salta. Oh shit. Try not to get run over. So he wanted the settlement in Salta. Salta is a city that's like northwest of here. Um, hundreds of kilometers. It's really far. It's in a completely different province. And uh, apparently <laughs> Cabrera had other ideas. So he decided to come down here instead and uh, he founded the settlement, like we said here, if we're guessing right, up at the top of that hill back there, in 1573. And that was defying the orders of the Viceroy. Uh, don't really know why he did it. There were, the, the research I've done sort of says that he had two goals. One, he wanted to find um, an exit to the Atlantic Ocean, meaning find a river that you could navigate all the way out to the Atlantic Ocean. And so I guess when he found, oh, the other, the other objective that he was trying to do was find like the city of the Caesars, which is basically like an El Dorado. It's like a, like a famous, um, you know, mythical city that actually doesn't exist, I don't think. But uh, more interesting... He was trying to find an exit to the Pacific, or the Atlantic Ocean. So the river here that runs through the city, the River Sucria, or the Primero, Primero River, actually it exits out, if you keep following it to the east, into this really huge lagoon. And uh, 
it's not anywhere near the Atlantic Ocean. It's like still inland pretty far, but it's big enough that if you're standing on the side of it and you don't know any better, you could think that it is like a bay of the Atlantic Ocean, which is exactly what Cabrera thought. So he wanted to found the city here along the river because he thought that you would be able to navigate the river east and end up in the Atlantic Ocean. He was uh, completely wrong about that, but you can't really fault him because at that time it's like, you know, there's no Google Maps. You can't just look at a Google Earth satellite view and be like, oh yeah, that's, that's at a lagoon. That's not connected to the ocean at all. So you're pretty much stuck with uh, Mark 1 eyeball to try and figure out what things actually are. So anyway, after he founded the city here, in uh, direct, like directly disobeying the Viceroy of Peru, uh, a year later in 1574, they cut his head off. So that was the end of Cabrera. And that's the lesson. Don't, uh, if the Viceroy of Peru tells you to found a city in Salta, you should probably found a city in Salta and not like hundreds of kilometers away down here in Cordoba. But for our story and for the story of the city of Cordoba, I guess it was pretty fortunate because now there's a big old city here, big beautiful city that we're visiting and uh, 1.6 million people live here. So I don't know, maybe Cabrera did something right, but he definitely got his head cut off. That's for sure. And uh, after he got his head cut off, he was replaced by, uh, you know, another, another governor whose name I can't really remember right now off the top of my head, but I'm sure we'll put it in uh, like a subtitle or something. And uh, after a few years with the settlement here, up at the top of the hill, or at least where we think it was up at the top of the hill, uh, the settlers and the, you know, the people of the settlement, they realized that it's not, it's not the place. It was, uh, I guess, something about the winds up on the top of the hill. There wasn't enough flat land for irrigation, for, for uh, you know, growing uh, crops and whatnot. So they made the move over to the other side of the river, on the right bank of the river, and they founded Cordoba in the place where, you know, at the center of the city, where, where we were the other day, um, seeing the Casa de Sobramante. And we'll walk around that whole area too, because there's a lot of cool stuff around there. Of course, the first church, you know, <laughs> you know how the, the Spanish were the first time they show up in some new area, kill off all the natives, what do they do? They start building the church. And they did, right there. And it's really beautiful, actually. Um, but we'll, we'll check that out after. But it looks like we're getting down to the end of the block here. And I can see that we're getting to like the bank of the river. And it looks like there actually is a monument. So I think we found it. I think we found the, uh, the monument to the original foundation, the founding of, uh, of the first settlement here in Cordoba in 1573. So uh, yeah, you can see it there. Oh yeah, this has got to be it. This has got to be it. Because the, the street just ends, which means that's the river. And if we're at the river, yeah, there's a monument here. This has got to be it. All right, let's check it out. Let's check, let's check this thing out. Let's see if it was all worth it. I mean, I don't think it was worth it for Cabrera. They cut that dude's head off. <laughs> Oh yeah, here we go. 
Monumento Memorial de la Fundación de Córdoba. See that right there? Pretty quiet around here. It's a Sunday. Everything's quiet on Sundays. There's the river. Yeah. Memorial de la Fundación. Homenaje de la ciudad. Al siglo. Is that siglo? Yeah, al siglo, no, al sitio, al sitio original de su fundación en el uh, 424, el uh, 424 aniversario, 6 de julio, 1573, 1997, sorry, I, <laughs> numbers are really hard, I gotta admit, so we're just gonna say them in English. Anyway, 424th anniversary in 1997, they put this thing up here. And it looks like they've added a couple extra plaques. 447th anniversary. Uh, maybe these people donated, donated some money to have their, uh, their plaque put up here. So this is the 418th anniversary, huh? I wonder if maybe this like originally was just this like low part here with these little plaques and they put them up and then someone, I'm guessing Dr. Ruben Americo Marti on the 424th anniversary shelled out some more money and they put this big thing up here. Anyway, there's some flagpoles here with no flags. Just a little disappointing, but I'm guessing that's what that that's what happened. They probably put like a little memorial, and then as people donated more, it uh, became a bigger memorial. But I mean, it's right here in this neighborhood, you know. It's just a just a neighborhood over here. We go down this way as to the river. It's like you'd never know this place was here. Unless you actually like really, really look into it. I mean, I had to like do a decent amount of research to try and figure out exactly where the spot was. I mean, it's easy to find the, uh, you know, the 1580 site where they built the church because there's a giant church there. It's the center of the city. I mean, it's like dead center. There's huge plaza there. Plaza de General San Martin. But over here, yeah, there it is, the river. This river is, uh, like I said, Primero River or River Sukia. And it's uh, extremely, extremely important to the history of Cordoba. This is basically, this is the history of Cordoba right here, this river. And this is the thing, this is the river that, uh, that uh, Cabrera thought would lead out to the Atlantic and it definitely does not lead out to the Atlantic there's a lot of interesting history around this river we're gonna talk more about it for sure a lot of uh, historical events especially during the colonial period they have to do with this river and as you can see there's like much higher banks the river's really low right now but you can see the higher banks you can see these retaining walls over here when the river floods, it like really floods, and that's um, one of the one of the big parts of the history of Cordoba is this river flooding, and a lot of the uh, well, a lot of historical events, and also some really interesting things that they've built here in Cordoba have to do with this river and this river flooding when it rains like crazy in here, which uh, it was doing yesterday actually. 98, 98 degrees, something like that, Fahrenheit, incredibly high humidity, started pouring rain. Not a great day, not a great day yesterday. That's why I stayed in, didn't really go out exploring, but anyway, I think from here, uh, I think we're going to catch a bus, because it's a little bit far to walk, 
to get over to the other part of the city, the uh, old center of the city where they moved the settlement after they realized this spot here was not the best. So uh, let's do that. We'll hop on a bus. When we get over to the center of the city, I'll show you exactly where they moved the settlement to. Say, so we arrived. We have arrived. Plaza de General San Martin. And uh, didn't take a bus. Couldn't find the bus stop. Took a taxi. Uh, it's pretty close, so not, not a problem. Anyway, here we are. Plaza de General... No. Plaza General de San Martin. Anyway. <laughs> There's a lot of plazas named after this guy. Uh, there's one in Buenos Aires too. We were we were hanging out there. It's right by Florida Street where we went and uh, exchanged our money. But uh, this one is the dead center of the old town of um, the old part of the city of Cordoba. And if you see, there's a statue behind me of uh, San Martin. And over there, right out in front, giant flag, Argentina. And also the flags of the province. And over here, on this side of the plaza, right past this uh, famous Amo CBA, like means like Amo Cordoba, I love Cordoba. That's a pretty famous landmark. Always see people taking pictures in front of this thing here, Amo CBA. But that's not what we're looking at. We're looking at this right here. Look at that. So that's the church, Catedral de Cordoba. And like I said, when the Spanish, you know, go and colonize any place, first thing they do is uh, show up and usually kill off a bunch of natives. But afterwards, they start building a church. And they started building this church basically right away, 1580, when they, when they settled this part of the city. Um, of course, it wasn't finished until like, I wanna say like 1680 something. It, it took like 100 years basically for them to build this whole thing. And uh, it's always crazy to me. Well, not crazy, but I mean, it makes sense, but it's always interesting, I guess when you hear about churches and cathedrals and things being built and how it takes hundreds of years for them to, to build it. And this one, you know, took a hundred years. If you go way back to like the medieval times, those like medieval cathedrals that took like 800 years to build, that just blows my mind. But an entire lifetime, two, three lifetimes, uh, it took to build this thing, but they built it. And this is like, you know, like I said, this is the old center of the city. You can see the uh, cobblestone streets here. Some tourists taking a picture out in front of the uh, Amo Cordoba. We could try to go into the cathedral, but it is Sunday, so there may be like uh, church services going on. And uh, if there are church services, I wouldn't want to interrupt that. I don't know. Maybe we'll just poke poke our head in real quick and see see what's going on. If possible, maybe we could film inside there. But uh, there's a lot of stuff to see around here. Unfortunately, it's Sunday, so a lot of the stuff is closed. Like right over there, this building here is a cultural museum. It's closed today. Uh, there is right behind that building, like further, just further back, like one block over. There's another museum. It's also closed today because it's Sunday. Um, but right behind this cathedral, there is a little plaza that I've found that is named the uh, Plaza of uh, Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera. So I think they have a plaza named after the original founder who defied the Viceroy and lost his head for it. Um, so I think what we'll do is we'll go over to the cathedral right now and we'll just look and see if we can film inside. If we can film inside, I'll get some film from inside and we can see what it looks like in there um, if we're not going to be like interrupting a church service. And then 
uh, we'll go over to the plaza and we'll check out uh, the uh, the plaza honoring uh, Luis de Cabrera. And then I think that'll probably be it for the video. I think we we found uh, we we did a good a good mission today. And uh, then this will be a good jumping off point for future videos um, that we can check out on days when all of this stuff is actually open. So let's go. Let's go over to the cathedral now. We were not allowed to film inside the cathedral, but we were allowed to go in and take some pictures. We caught it just after the church service was over, but just before they were closing up the church for the afternoon. And we were able to see just the amazing interior of this cathedral. It truly is amazing. You can tell uh, why it took them over 100 years to build this thing because the amount of work uh, that went into it, and the amazing artistry, the paintings um, up on the ceiling and everything is just truly amazing. A really great sight to see. If you're ever in Cordoba, you absolutely have to go and check this place out. So we got inside got inside the cathedral we're not allowed to film in there and actually I think it was like right after a church service so they were closing everything up um, we got in like right at the last second uh, the security guard I asked if I could film he thought about it for a second and he was like no you can't film in here so I did manage to snap some pictures though because it is amazing in there. And I can tell why it took like over 100 years to build this thing um, because they put a lot of work into it on the side of the building here, you can see like the old wall of the building. We're going around the back towards the plaza, right? Plaza de Jeronimo, uh, Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera. And uh, man, yeah, like I said, I'll show you some of the pictures, of course, but really beautiful. I mean, incredible incredible um, you know paintings on the ceilings the floor was this incredible mosaic um, just a, a, an amazing amount of work that must have gone into that cathedral you know it's really I don't know it's really something I've seen cathedrals and stuff like that in different countries like a uh, long time ago I was in Italy and seeing some of the things in Italy you know it just blows your mind but like this one also really incredible inside um, I'm glad we got to go in there and see that. Even if we weren't allowed to film, I'm glad we were able to to just see the inside and maybe take a few sneaky pictures. And uh, right as I was leaving, the gates were locked, and so the guy actually had to like unlock the gate to let me out. So I really do think we snuck in there right right at the end, right before they're about to close. But right back here, behind behind the uh, cathedral is our guy right there that's Luis or Jeronimo Luis de Caprera and here it is Plaza Jeronimo Luis de Caprera Fundador de Cordoba 6th of July 1573 this is the Plazoleta like little plaza basically of uh, of the fundador, and so this dude right here, back up, see if we can get a good shot of him. It's the guy. It's the guy who tried to tried to find an exit to the uh, to the Atlantic Ocean, and ended up finding an exit to a lagoon that was not the Atlantic Ocean. He defied the viceroy, uh, the viceroy of Peru. And instead of founding the city of Salta, he came down here and he founded the city of Cordoba. And for that, he got his head chopped off. But I guess, uh, I guess we'll take a moment. Take a look around the plaza. Like I said, it's a Sunday, so it's very quiet. I imagine on a weekday or on a Saturday or something, this place is much, much busier. But, uh, that's gonna be it. That'll probably be it for the video. We've seen the places we wanted to see. We saw the original foundation site, or what we think is the original foundation site. I'm convinced that is. I mean, the top of the hill, right? You can see all the way down to the river. It's a hills in every direction. 
It's the very, very top. That's got to be it. That's got to be where they built the fort. Anyway, we saw the place where they moved the settlement here, to the center of the old, old city, Plaza San Martin, and the Catedral de Córdoba. And uh, we saw our plaza there. Our plaza dedicated to the guy, Jeronimo Luis de Cabrera. So I think that's going to be it. We're going to have more videos for sure. Lots of really interesting stuff to see around here in the old part of the city. And uh, we'll come back on days when it's actually open. And we'll check that stuff out. But for now, uh, stay tuned. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. Thank mm -hmm. you.